Oh, you can do a little bit better than that. Amen. You see, you have to understand that you're in the house of God and today. And, and, and in order for the glory of God to be released, it starts with you. It starts with you. It doesn't start with me, and it doesn't start with them. It starts with you. So before we get started on today, let's just give God a round of hand. Okay, now, now we're getting started. Oh, yeah, it's, it's getting warm up in here. You see, you see, God is doing something. Amen? You see, God wants to start with you. I don't care if it's in your family. I don't care if it's at your work. I don't care if, where it's at. He wants to start with you. Heavenly Father, we come before you on this day. Thanking you for life, health, and strength. Thanking you for life, health, and strength. Because in the midst, oh Heavenly Father, we don't have life without you. We don't have help without you. And we don't have the strength to even raise our hands without you. So we thank you, oh Heavenly Father, for who you are. We thank you for your people on today. Those that are here, those that are online, and those that are on their way, oh Heavenly Father. We ask, oh Heavenly Father, to have your way. And as we start this day, oh Heavenly Father, we want to start it out with a declaration from Isaiah 40 and 31. If you could just stand with me for a moment in unity. Repeat after me. I declare that I will walk in the hope of the Lord concerning my life and everyone connected to me. Therefore, we will be renewed in our strength. We will mount up with wings like an eagle. And we will run and not grow weary. And we will walk and not faint. If you listen to the words that have come out of your mouth on today, you should have a renewed strength of who you are and where you're going. Because this is your call to worship. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord and pray. For truly the Lord is worthy of glory, honor, and praise, both now and forever. Is anybody excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Before we sing a song, before we lift up worship, can we lift up our own sound yeah. of exaltation unto the Father? Father, we give you glory for allowing us to be in the room this morning. Father, you're holy. Father, you're worthy of honor and glory. We praise your name this morning. We praise your name this morning. Come in the room, God. Come in the room, God. Come have your way. Come have your way. Holy Spirit, you're welcome here. Come on, let's press into his presence just a little bit longer. Holy Spirit, you're welcome in the room. We invite you in the room, invade our space. Come on, Father, invade our space. We're waiting on you. We're waiting on you, Father. We're expecting you. Is anybody expecting something from the Father this morning? God, we're expecting you to come do miracles, signs, and wonders in the room this morning. And so we're going to lift up your holy and your awesome name. Does anybody know that the Lord is awesome this morning? Yeah. Ah, oh, come on. I said, does anybody know that the Lord is awesome this morning? We're going to sing this all with good song to the Father this morning. Can you put your hands on it right here? Everybody clap your hands. Oh, everybody clap your hands. This song is easy. I know you know what it is. It says this. Lord, you are awesome.
if it wasn't for your love, if it wasn't for your love, if it wasn't for your grace, I don't know.
receive our love receive our love and as we shout your name receive our praises receive our praises for your name is high be glorified there's no other name there's no other name there's no other name like yours your name is high be glorified there's no other name no other name no other name like yours so we need you high Can y'all sing that with me this morning? As we love, as we love oh, on you, on you. Receive, our love. receive our love, receive our love, receive our love, and as we shout, as we shout oh, your name, name. Receive, our, receive our praise, receive our praise, your name is high. Lift up a war cry this morning. Y'all ready? Ah, uh, come on, I can't hear y'all. Y'all ready to lift up a war cry this morning? Whoa! So we're gonna sing this right here. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Come on, raise it up. Oh. Oh. 
Somebody lift up the holy king we serve. Come on, lift up the holy king we serve. What a great and mighty God we serve. Come on, we just sing a song that says we'll lift him up. So let's lift him up. The Bible says that if we lift him up, he'll draw all men unto him. So as we lift him, he's bringing souls to him. So I don't know who in your family that you need to get saved, but if you lift him up in this room, I promise you God will go to your house and he'll save your family. So lift up the name of Jesus. Come on, lift up the name of Jesus. I promise I'm about to get out y'all's way, but I feel that there's something that needs to break in the room. Can we just lift up our hands and, and say something sweet to the Father? We lift you up. We lift you up. Draw near to us, Jesus. Draw near to us, Jesus. We lift you up. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen, amen, Auntie G. Good morning to you. It is my pleasure to welcome you, to welcome you. But let me start first by welcoming our visitors online. I was just taking a peek. It's so wonderful to see you all there. Thank you much. Thank you very much for joining us. And can I remind you that this is Communion Sunday. So during the time that I'm recognizing everyone else here in the, secret in the um, sanctuary, would you go to your refrigerator, make sure you have some juice and your crackers or bread or whatever you choose and be prepared so that you can take part with us for our communion, okay? And to those here in the sanctuary, welcome, welcome, welcome. It is a pleasure to see you here this Sunday morning. And I have a lot to share with you, but the very first thing I want to do is to recognize our first-time visitors. Raise your hand if you're visiting us for the first time, or stand to your feet, because what you are about to experience is the NTG show of the love of Christ. You're going to feel the love of Christ right about now as our members come by, our elders, our ministers, our wonderful pastor, our senior pastor, comes to greet you as well. In the name of Jesus. now I know that you feel the love of God, don't you? In every hug, in every touch, in every well wish. And as you make your way back to your seats, I just want to give you an idea of the kind of things that are taking place here at NTG. I want to share our announcements with you. And I must let you know that, where are the badges? Where are the badges? Here they are. I, I just want you to stand up a minute because I want, I want you to know what's going on with the badges. Every Tuesday morning, 6 a.m., 6 a.m., every Tuesday morning, they lead the prayer line. Now, now, 
Let me tell you this. Let, let me just tell you this because I want you to understand how God moves. I shared this morning that yesterday I was in urgent care, ER, because the enemy is trying to shut my lungs down with the asthma, right? But listen, but God also said that he's released healing over the prayer line, right? And over this house, he's released healing. Now understand this morning, Elder Badgett came to me and he said to me, I'm not going to say a word. I just want you to touch because God has given me the gift of healing. And when he touched my hands, because I was wondering, how am I going to get up here? How am I going to be able to speak? I'm breathing clearly. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. And also, this other elder here, Elder Antonio, stand up a minute. Now, I know that you can't necessarily see this from where you are, but I know that online you can zoom in and you can see. So I want to make reference to this. Elder Antonio told me this morning, your NTG sign is upside down. Now, I don't know if you can see it from there, right? Online, I know you can zoom in and see it. And here was my response to him, and this is the reason why I've left it the way it is. NTG, we come to shake the world and turn it upside down. <laughs> A hundred percent serious about that. So, we have some very special guests in the house that I'm going to introduce to you shortly. But I'm going to give you a minute. I'm going to go through the announcements, and then I'll come and introduce you one by one, okay? Just want to make sure that you're good and that you're relaxed and you're ready. Because running for office is a special thing. And if you believe in the prophetic word, God has said that he's raising up his people and making sure that they get placed where he wants them placed so that what he wants to happen in this earth realm will take place. So that's why I say I know you could have been anywhere right now, but you have come to good ground. You are on good ground. So now I'm going to share the announcements. I told you about the prayer line on Tuesday morning, 6 o'clock in the morning, get up. Set your alarm for about 10 to 6 because you're going to need to come in, get into some worship, and then we launch, okay? We turn the world upside down on, on Tuesday mornings. On Wednesday, we follow that up with your midweek top-up. We call it Facebook Live. It's on Facebook Live, and it's our Bible study. You know, this is one of the things that we were able to do. People think that COVID was, you know, it brought all bad things, but this is one good thing that stayed. We're able to reach out because it doesn't matter where you are, anywhere in the world, you can reach us on Facebook Live. And when we get out there and we start to spread the word of God and share something to encourage you, on Wednesday at 7 o'clock, it is good that we can do it virtually, okay? On Sunday mornings before service starts, there are two things that happen typically on Sunday mornings. First of all, I'm going to tell you that at 8.30 in the morning, where's Minister Tyrone? Do I see him? He may not be here. Or Minister Darlene, yes. Can you stand up for me? And the reason I ask you to stand is like typically we ask them to raise their hand, and it was brought to my attention that everyone here can see the hand when it's raised, but when they're online, they want to see your face as well, okay? So this is Minister Darlene, and she has, along with Minister um, Tyrone, our salvation class. And that's at 8.30 on Sundays. And then every second Sunday, 8.30 with Minister Arkeesia. Where is she? There she is standing over there. Yep. There she is. And we also have to look to see Minister Arkeesia if we can have members virtually as well in that class. Okay? Because our reach is beyond here. Our reach is to the world. Got it? Okay. Um, second Sundays, we also have, I see you in the back, Mother Robinson. Stand up, please. We have our Slims meeting. And it's the second Sunday, so that's on the 14th. You can meet with, this is our leader for Slims, senior leaders in ministry. Meet with her if you're interested in joining or being a part of that. 
And then on third Sundays, when I tell you we're busy at NTG, we are busy. We're doing the work of God. Yes, we are. On the third Sunday after service, we have a hospitality meeting, right? Every third Sunday, our hospitality meeting. And then our baptism classes. Here is A.P. Baker. You will see her in a moment as she will lead our communion. But A.P. Baker, a. A. Baker is the one that you want to see if you're interested in being baptized. Standing up and telling the world, listen, I belong to him. Let it be known. Let it be seen. Make sure you see her and um, she'll give you all the details for that. Now, can I go back to something that is really important coming up? 50 days after Easter marks Pentecost Sunday. So our pastor has asked us to do something. Last week, you remember the call? She asked for 25 people to stand and join us every Wednesday. That was seven Wednesdays. Now there's six left. I say let your yes be yes and your no be no. If you stood up and you said that you were going to do it, make sure you're doing it. She's only asked you for five hours. And the thing that came to me this morning is this. Fasting is a sacrifice. Number one, and it's a way to let your flesh know that you have said no to the enemy, his attractions, and his distractions, and that you have said yes to the will of God, okay? So if you said you were going to do it, do it. The other thing pastor asked for is to bring your oil. Did anybody bring it today? If you didn't remember, you still have some time. Bring your oil and lay it here on the altar. And pastor said, it's going to be blessed and prayed over every single Sunday up until Pentecost Sunday. So if you have oil, please bring it and allow her to bless it for you. Um, one more exciting thing. Can you see that I can breathe? Can you see? They have healing hands right there. God is telling the truth. I'm telling you because this morning I could not breathe when I came in here. I want to tell you about a book launch that's taking place. Here it is. The latest author of NTG. Yes, 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 yes. Let me, let me tell you why I'm excited about this. One, pastor, pastor spoke um, Psalms 1 and 3 over me, planted by the river. You know what I mean? So you see, when that pestilence comes, I shall not be moved because my roots will run deep. There's not a single word that she has prophesied over me that has fallen to the ground, not one. So I am so proud to have her as the forward writer of this book. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So the launching is going to be on April the 20th, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. So I look forward to seeing you there, okay? Thank you very much. And also, please know that on uh, while we're talking about books, April the 26th, is going to be a Friday evening, and it's our youth book club event. 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. All middle school and high school students are welcome. There's nothing like seeing our young people reading. Do you understand? Once it goes in, it cannot come out, right? So if you have a child that is in middle school or high school, encourage them to come that Friday night, the 26th, 7 o'clock, right here at NTG until 10 p.m. And now, at this time, I'd like to do the recognition. I spoke to you about it a few minutes ago, right? So I want to recognize those who have put their hands to the plow, those who are going to allow God to put them in the place where they are destined to be to accomplish his will in the earth, okay? So let me start with Dr. Anderson, who is running for chairwoman of Clayton County Board of Commissioners. Thank you so much. God bless you, and it's a pleasure to have you here with us. I'd like to recognize Mrs. Arvis Jones Walker, and she is running for the Georgia House Senate District 34. District, I beg your pardon, that is my error because I have it here written correctly. Let me do that again. Mrs. Arvis Jones Walker, and she is running for Clayton County Commissioner, District Number One. God bless you. And now let me move to the Honorable Valencia Stovall. 
Good morning. We acknowledge your presence. We bless you. She is running for the Georgia House Senate District number 34. Georgia House Senate. She's now running for Georgia Senate. Thank you so much for that. Judge Dietra Butler. She'll be here next Sunday. Okay. But we will... I got it. We will... We will did you hear that, Elder Badgett? We must put her on the prayer list on Tuesday morning. We'll be praying for her. Just let her know that, please. And we look forward to her being here next Sunday. Judge Dietra Butler is running for Clayton County Superior Court Judge. So we acknowledge that, and we'll have her on the prayer list. I know that you're noting it now. Thank you so much. And can I also conclude by introducing Miss Nadine Thomas. And Miss Nadine Thomas is running for the Georgia House Senate District 44. Thank you so much for being here. I just pronounce, yes, ma'am. Eric, and running for, House District. thank you, House District 75, running for re-election. Just wanted to repeat that so that all of those who are with us online can hear clearly as well. So we bless each and every one of you in the work that you have taken up in putting your hand to the plow and allowing God to use you in this upcoming election. Thank you so much. And now at this time, I would like to introduce to you the one and only A.P. Baker. A.P. Baker is going to lead us in our communion part of the service. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, and we just thank God for all of his goodness unto us. Amen. I want you to prepare your heart and mind right now to receive of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Communion is not something that you want to take lightly, nor do you want to um, think about, start thinking about other things, but start thinking about Jesus. Start thinking about your relationship with him. Amen. Because this is not a religious thing. Amen. It's a relationship thing. Amen. You want to make sure that your relationship with Jesus is solid and right on. And I'm not saying that you won't slip up sometimes, but you want to get it right with him. Amen. Amen. And this time we want to go before the Lord in prayer. And I want you to think about Amen. Not only just asking God to forgive you for the things that you've allowed, amen, before him, but also remember to forgive yourself. Amen. It's going to be very important, amen, that you ask God, that you talk to the Lord, that you tell him all about your issues and your situations because you don't want to take communion and have ill will in your heart. Amen, amen, amen. Gracious almighty God and King, here we are before you, Lord God, and we come as humbly, Lord God, as we know how. We are asking you, dear God, to wash us clean, to forgive us, oh God, of anything we said, thought, done, anything that we believed, oh God, that was out of the will, your will, Lord God, because it's you we want to please every day. Forgive us, God, and wash us clean. Get us right, Lord God, with you. Oh, Father, we thank you so much for your goodness, for your mercy, for your grace, oh God, that follows us 
own, God, that transcends our lives, oh God, that keeps us, oh God. Oh, we thank you, Lord God, for the angels that you dispatched, oh God, to surround us, to keep us, to cover us, oh God, from any hurt, harm, or danger. God, we thank you for your goodness unto us. Oh God, and we are laying at your feet, God. Oh, Father, and asking, Lord God, oh, Father, that you will come, Lord God. Oh, Father, set our hearts aflame, oh God. Help us to remember, oh God, what you did for us, oh God. How you, Lord God, oh, bled and died, oh, for us, oh God. Oh, Father, that your blood, Lord God, was spilled, oh God, and came out, Lord God, to remit our sins, God. Wash us, oh God. Get us right, God. We don't want anything to separate us, oh God, and to come between us, Lord God, you and us, Lord God. We want to be right on, oh God, that you will hear us, oh God, that our prayers not go, Lord God, hallelujah, or unanswered, oh God. Oh, Father, we thank you right now. Touch your people. Move in their lives, Lord God. Strengthen and empower your people to stand, oh God, in the face of adversity, in the face of the enemy, oh God. Oh, Father, I thank you right now. Oh, God, that you will do this and other things, Lord God, in our lives for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Thank you, Jesus. We serve a mighty God. Yes, Lord. And he did so much for us that we just have to thank him for his goodness. We just have to bless and magnify his name because there's nobody, nobody like him. Amen. amen. I'm going to read for your hearing. Amen. John chapter 6 and verses. Amen. 53 to 56. So Jesus said again, I tell you the truth, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, you cannot have eternal life within you. But anyone who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And I will raise that person at the last day. For my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. Anyone who eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. Hallelujah. It's the blood that was shed on Calvary's cross that saves us, that washes us. And it's by faith that all these things are appropriated unto us. Amen. I thank God for his goodness. And I am blessed beyond measure because he set my heart aflame for him. Amen. I just praise and magnify the great God of glory because he's so good and so kind. Amen. Amen. And he has given us so much, people of God, that we ought to be out of our speech, just worshiping and magnifying him because he is so worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy of all praise and glory and honor. And we thank him, amen, for calling us out of darkness into his marvelous Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
on the night that Jesus was betrayed. The disciples were gathered around him. And he talked with them. He shared some things with them. And then he took bread. And he blessed the bread. And he broke it. And I was seated with the disciples. And he took the cup. As he was explaining... will share to you this cup of blessing. He brought forth the new covenant. And I can only imagine as he was being eaten, as he was being hit and whipped, that he had you in mind. He had you in mind. He knew that we would need a savior, a deliverer, a keeper, a comforter. He knew. And it wasn't by accident that he decided to die in our place. Oh, Lord. He blessed this cup. And then they began to drink. He was drinking the cup. For that cup, the blood was shed. It washed away our sins. It justified us and set us as if we had nothing. No sin. It washed away totally. And we have to continue, people of God, to walk in that newness. And it's a daily repentance that keeps us before the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's just pray. Gracious Almighty God, we thank you for the work that you did on Calvary's cross. We appreciate, God, that you made us new, that you made us over, Lord God, that you're teaching us and raising us up, oh God, as people that not only believe you, but will share our conviction with others, that they may know that you died for them, oh God, because of your love for us as your people. God, we bless you, and we thank you for your goodness unto us. And it's in the matchless and mighty name of Jesus that we call unto you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now you'll receive an offering team. Amen. Come on and put your hands together. Hallelujah. There's such a sweet aroma in this room this morning. Can we just take a moment, if you guys don't mind standing one more time for me, and can we just lift up worship to the God that she yeah. just spoke about this morning, that he wouldn't find it robbery to die for us, to hang on a cross for us. Father, we worship you simply just from that fact this morning, Father, that you loved us in spite of us, that you had us in mind when you died on that rugged cross, Father. When you rose out of the grave, Father, you had me in mind with all of my sins, with all of my mistakes, with all of my mess. God, you still had me in mind. You had me on your mind. And so, Father, we worship you this morning. We worship you. Come on, we worship you. Thank you for your love, Jesus. Come on, let's raise up our sound unto the King. He's listening for our sound of gratitude. Hey, we love you, Jesus, because you first loved us. In spite of us, you love us. In spite of us, you love us. 
spite of us, you love us. So we raise up our worship to you, Jesus. From the bottom of our hearts, in spirit and in truth, we worship you. Come on, let's raise up a sound to the King. We lift you up high above our problems. Thank you for loving us. I hear that in this room. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us. Wrapping us in the cradle of your arms, Jesus. Stretching your hand out to us, Jesus. No, come on, let's continue to raise up this sound. I'm sorry, I'm trying to start this song, but I feel the presence of the Lord in the room. We lift you up, draw near to us, Jesus. Draw near to us, Jesus. We lift you up. Oh, 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 oh. Thank you, Lord. So I will exalt you. God, I will exalt you. up this morning, I will exalt you. I'll lift up my hands to you. And I'll raise my voice to you. We raise it up to you. I will exalt you in spirit and in truth from the bottom of my heart. I surrender my will to you, Jesus. I surrender my way to you, Lord. Oh, you are my God. Come on, I feel something breaking in the room. I will exalt you. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Jesus. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun, Lord. Your name is worthy to be praised. I will call you God. You are my God. I will exalt you. When I'm faced with God, I'm willing to on you. Oh, 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 you are my God. You are my God. I love the next part. It just says this. You're my hiding place. My safe refuge. My treasure, Lord. You are. You're my Anointed one, most holy. Come on, can you sing in my hiding place? My hiding place, my safe You're my treasure, my Lord. Treasure, Lord, you are. Come on, sing in my friend and king. My friend and king. Anointed, anointed one, you are holy. He's been a brother, a friend that sticks closer than a brother, most holy one, holy one more time, my 
house do I have anybody in the room today will say I will not fear come on let's bless the Lord hallelujah come on put those hands together let's give God some praise in this house what an incredible and a mighty God we serve amen 
I'm excited about the Lord on this morning. I want to take an, just a moment to um, thank those that are streaming with us online and those that are here in the sanctuary for visiting with us. We know that you could be anywhere else, but for such a time as this, God had you here. How many of you love them on today? How many of you know you can't fear? Where there's fear, there's no faith. So we must have faith over fear. Sister Sandra, come get me back to where I need to be. I, my iPad is lost. And every now and then you need some borrowed stuff. Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, let's put your hands together one more time for Jesus. Good. Amen. Come on, let's bless the Lord in this house. And I just want to pray. My scripture today is coming from Luke, the 22nd chapter. I would like to um, thank God for all of our, those that are running for office and those that are currently in office. I thank God for you. Come on, let's, we can do better than that. Let's celebrate those that are in office and running. That's not an easy task. Amen, that's not an easy task. Amen, somebody. And we pray for you daily. Those are challenging positions, amen, to be in, and we want you to know that we are praying with you and for you. This may not work for me. Do it again. I need a Bible. Can I get a Bible? Thank you. Can she? Yeah, come on. Just put me back. No, this is good. You got it. Put me back to where I was. Amen. Luke 22. That's not an easy assignment, running for office. And you scrutinize whether you do right or do wrong. And somebody always got something to say. Amen. But as long as you and Jesus, as long as you're good with God, amen, and you do what you do, you keep doing what you're doing for the Lord, amen, and he will bless you. And so we do celebrate you and we honor you and we're praying for you in this season. Turn with me to Luke 22. Amen. I want to begin reading at the seventh verse. And now in at the 19th verse. It says, then came the day of unleavened bread when the Passover must be killed. And he sent Peter and John saying, go and prepare us the Passover that we may eat. And they said unto him, where will thou that we prepare? And he said unto them, behold, when ye enter into the city, there shall a man meet you, bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house where he entereth in. And ye shall say unto the good man of the house, The master said it unto thee, Where is the guest chamber? Where shall I eat the Passover with my disciples? And he shall show you a large upper room furnished. There make ready. And they went and found as he had said unto them. And they made ready the Passover. And when the hour was come, he sat down. And the twelve apostles with him. He said unto them, 
With desire, I have desired to eat. This Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, take this and divide it amongst yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took the bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them saying, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we thank you for the word of God on this morning. God bless the word. Allow it to become life and dwell amongst us. God, have your way in this place. Somebody came, Father God, expecting a word. Somebody came with an issue. Somebody came, Lord God, in need of prayer. God, do it today. Bless in this house. Heal, deliver loose, and set free. God, allow this word to be bread to each and every one of us, God, so we might eat, Father God, and drink and thirst no more. Father, have your way. Use me, God. Bless these lips of clay to speak a word, God. And you have your way in this house, Lord God, and you minister to those that are hungry. Those that are in need of something, God. You said that those that shall thirst and hunger after righteousness shall be filled. And Lord God, we're thanking you this morning for filling us. Fill our cup, God, until it overflows. Father, have your way. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. And the church said amen. Amen and amen. Before you take your seat, look at your neighbor and tell them you're chosen. That's the wrong one. You have permission to move. If they don't want to move and they don't want to talk back to you, go ahead on and change your seat. Look at somebody else and tell them you're chosen. You're chosen. You may take your seat in the presence of the Lord. There's a story that I like to tell and Oftentimes, I tell it so that you can get the picture and what God is saying. But there was a, there was a father and a son that were going out to spend time together. And the father took the son fishing. And it was a beautiful day. It was a beautiful day. And as they went out fishing, it was beautiful. And he was teaching him, his son to fish and teaching him to become a man and put away childish things. And once they got out in the ocean, there arose a storm. And it became so fierce, so quick, that they didn't have time to prepare. So as the storm rose, the little boy was thrown overboard. And the father panicked and in fear that he would not see his son. And he found a rope in the bottom of the boat and he threw it out to his son and he said, grab a hold of the rope. He said, grab it. He said, son, grab the rope. And the little boy was fighting for his life, but he finally grabbed a hold of the rope. And as he held the rope, the rope began to break. As the father began to pull him in, the rope started to break. And the father yelled to his son, and he said, Son, 
reach beyond the break. He told the son to reach beyond the break so that he could grab his hand beyond where the rope was breaking. And he kept yelling, son, you got to reach beyond the break. You have to reach beyond the things that are breaking in your life, the things that are not all together. You got to go beyond that. And he began to yell and scream to the son. He said, reach beyond the break until he was able to grab the boy's hand and pull him back in the boat. And I want you to know on this morning that the father is calling you to reach. He's calling you to reach beyond the places that are breaking in your life. The father is calling you to reach beyond the things that are not all together. But the one thing about it is that as the son was chosen, so are you. You're chosen to do what you do. The little boy was chosen, the son, the father, was chosen to be the Passover lamb. That's why when we partake in the, in the supper of the Lord, it reminds us of, of what the son has done for us. And he teaches us that even though you don't have it all together, you're still chosen. <laughs> and the one thing that I love about this text, I love this about the text, is that God calls imperfect people. And the reason that I think he, cho he chooses imperfect people is because he lets us know that he's not a respecter of none. It's not because of what you have that makes you more worthy. It's not because of your degree. It's not because of who you are. It's just because God chose you. And the reason that I love being chosen is because if you didn't pick me up, brother, sister, you can't. You can't, you can't put me down now. You can't, you can't let go of me. And the one thing about being chosen with God is that the, 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 the bottom... The end of a thing is always sometimes better than the beginning. It's always better than the beginning. And so the thing that God does in your life, you don't have to worry or depend on anybody else. Because when God calls us, he wants us to be dependent upon him. That's why he didn't give you everything you needed, but what you have is enough to make it if you depend on him to give you the rest. And that's why he said if you reach beyond the thing that's breaking in your life, he'll bless you because that's the kind of God that we serve. And so here it is right here. And the Lord, as I begin to ask God, why did you say chosen? Why did you say chosen? Why are they chosen? He said, because some people in the room, T, they're going to believe that they're not chosen because of the things that they're encountering. I don't know about you, but if you look at your situation, sometimes that's enough to count you out. And some of y'all, everybody up in here didn't come from with a silver spoon in your mouth. You didn't come with all the money you had. You didn't come from greatness. You had to ride the bus. Come on up in here. You didn't come. You don't even look like where you're going. And then they're trying to figure out how you get in the position. But I'm trying to figure out how you are in the position that you're in and why you're worried about what it is that I'm doing because when I know that when God calls you I feel like preaching up in here I don't know who I came for but I'm telling you when God calls you y'all heard it like this when he calls you he qualifies the call come on somebody he don't call the qualified uh -uh, it's not for those that think they got it all together but look at your neighbor and tell him I don't know about you but I was called I was chosen here it is 
it is right here. So you ask, what is a rose? What is a rose? What is a rose? A rose is nothing when it's with the whole group. But when you but when you get a rose, it's because it was chosen. The Bible says that many are called. See, everybody can't take a licking and, and keep on ticking. Everybody can't handle trouble. But you, you on the other hand, come on up in here. A rose is chosen. They could have picked anybody else, but God chose you. Deuteronomy, in, in the book of Deuteronomy 7, he said, amongst all the people, I chose. Amongst all the people, I chose you. Me? Who, me? Can't be. When you look back over your life, anybody ever look back and seen that you came from, yeah, you came from the hood. Yep, that was you from the projects. Yep, that was you driving the hoopty, praying that you made it to where you was going. And he had the nerve to choose. I feel God in this house. I'm trying to slow down. Here it is. But he chose you. And he knew your background. He knew your history. He knew you weren't no, oh, here it is. God in this house. He knew. He knew you. But he still. He still chose you. But I'm telling you, it's wonderful when God chooses people that don't qualify. It's good when God puts his anointing on you. Come on, somebody. In the midst of where he's taking you to, he's telling the boy, look, reach beyond the break. If you just can put your hand in my hand and reach beyond the thing that's trying to take you out, I'll pull you. Where is Blake? I'll pull you in. The thing is that God chose you. And you got to understand how this works. He always chooses people that don't have nothing. Don't he do it? He chooses people that ain't going nowhere. People look by, they'll walk by you and say, hmm. But they don't realize they're going to encounter you again. Y'all going to hear me in a minute. They're going to have to come your way again because you're chosen. I don't, might not look like nothing. I may not look like much, but it's not what's on the outside. I hear God. But it's who he called. A rose. A piece of bread. A, a chosen vessel. He qualifies the call. And I know you ain't going to always drive that hoopty. You ain't, you ain't going to always live like you're living. Come on, somebody. I might have started from the bottom now. I'm right here. I'm right here. I'm in the house. Here it is right here. Because this is how it is. Listen, let me tell you something. God always loved using people that need him. He loved using people, come on somebody, that a lady are proud of side and say, Lord, if you don't do it, it can't, it can't get done. If, if you don't heal me, if you don't make a way, if you don't give me the money, God, I'm not going to be able to make it. I know y'all got it together, but for the rest of us, if you don't do it, God, it won't get done. Look at a neighbor and tell him it won't always be this way. It won't always be this way. It won't always be this way. The breaking will always be there, but it won't always be like this. The Bible says, he says that, that the Lord said you were chosen and, and by him being the Passover lamb. I love it because the Bible teaches us that there's not an infirmity. There's not an emotion. 
that you can feel that he haven't already. <laughs> oh, I feel God in this house. There's not an emotion that you can't feel that he's already felt. And I love it. Don't you love it? You got to love it. Look at your neighbor. Just touch somebody and tell them it's good that you were hurt. It's good that you was hurt. Because what the Bible does, he takes the hurt and he teaches you how to love the thing that hurts you. Come on, somebody. But the hurt was already prepared in you to be able to handle it so that you can have compassion on those that do you wrong. And that's what he does. I love, I love somebody that's been through something. That's your neighbor. You ever been through... I love them that been through something. How are you going to tell me to hold on if you've never? How are you going to tell me that trouble don't last always if you never had no? How are you going to tell me that weeping may endure for a night if you always had a sugar daddy, if you always had a sugar, how you gonna tell me how to hold on if you never, you never had to hold on. How you gonna tell me about food stamps if you never? I love somebody that's been through I love somebody that's been through something that came out on the other side. I love somebody who has taken a licking and just kept on ticking. I don't know how I got to church, but all I know I had to be here. I don't know how I came out of the fire, but all I know I came out on the other side. I don't know. I'll tell you why. Because he that kept you, he that you reached out to, he that pulled you beyond the break. He's a keeper. He's a keeper. He's a, he look at your neighbor. That's the wrong neighbor. You got to find somebody else and tell him he's a keeper. He's a keeper. And if you walk with him any time, if you ever spend time with him, I don't know about you, but I remember spending time with God when things weren't going right. I remember praying and praising and giving God some glory when things weren't always going right. I remember when I got up off my knees. I remember after I finished praying, the things that look like what they look like before I went down. On my knees. But Lucretia is who's with you. The Bible says he that is with you is greater than he that is in the world. So what are you saying? The trouble is what makes you. The trouble is what blesses you. The trouble, the hurt, the problems. That when you learn that Jesus is in it with you. Oh. When you learn that God gets in your trouble. When you learn that God is on your side. See, Christian children are not like the world. Come on, we're like baby kids. We don't die. We... We multiply. What do you mean, Pastor? See, now I can lay hands and the sick will recover. Now I can speak to the mountain and the mountain shall be removed. Why? Because I kept my hand in God's hand. Do I have a witness in the house that though they slay me, yet will I trust them? says that the last supper is when he took the bread he chose it he chose the Passover lamb he chose you 
when you ever see anybody going through something, it's a sign that God is with them. It's a sign that God is using them. It's a sign that he is a very present help in the time of trouble. The Bible says he took the bread. That means he took your life. The Bible teaches us that when you give your life to Christ, everything must bow. Woo! Everything must surrender. Everything that you know you to be, you got to turn it over to God. Because with God, all things are possible. He took the bread. He took your life. He picked your life. He picked the rose. Come on, somebody. He didn't make a mistake when he chose you. The problem is you don't know who you are. Because if you knew who you were, you wouldn't try to fit in everywhere. If you knew who you were, you wouldn't try to get in the clique and get in the club. You'll be okay with them not inviting you to the party. Because you realize it wasn't them. It was him who didn't want me there. Because if God wanted you there, you would have had to have been there. Come on, somebody. And this is how he does our life. He takes it. And the Bible says he blesses it. Don't you know that you are blessed? Don't you know that God has blessed your life? That's why you find trouble on your side. That's why you find trouble on your side. Every now and then, the enemy always get mad. And how you know you're being blessed is when your past start calling. Here it is right here. It's when things you left behind start following you and start tipping at your door and creeping. That's when you know God is on your side. It's when hell starts breaking loose. When people start doing things that they have no business doing. That's when you know that you're blessed. When trouble starts breaking out. Come here, Taylor. Let me show you how to do it. When God stand right here, starts blessing you, see, the people that are closest to you is going to recognize that. And now they begin to have a problem with you. So they step away and say, you trying to be all of that? I ain't. You trying to be all of that. I'm not trying to be all of that. I'm just trying to do what, and if they really knew your prayers. Lord, I don't know how in the world you're going to pull this one off with me. If they only knew your prayers was, Lord, if you can use anything, use me, Lord. Here's my hand and my feet. Touch my heart, Lord. Speak to me. If you can use anybody, use me, Lord. And then they hating, and you ain't even there yet. What they going to do when you rip? What are they going to do? <laughs> so what they do, they move from you. But then when you start taking off, here they come, now they want to act like a friend. And you know when it ain't God, now they're following you. And the way to get them off of you is that you got to go higher. Because they can't come. Thank you. They can't come to another level. They can't go where you're going. You got to go higher. Look at your neighbor and tell them if you want them to get off of you, you got to go higher. 
And I remember Michael Jordan said, they said, Michael, how in the world could you jump so high? Right, Devon? He said, well, you got to go low. If you want God to work it out for you, you got to go low. You got to get down on your knees and begin to pray and ask God. So if you want to go higher, you got to go. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. So you got to go higher. So here it is. God took your life. He broke your life. He blessed it. No, he took it. He blessed it. And then he broke it. Don't you know God builds you while breaking you? He's building you while he's breaking you. What do you mean, Pastor? Well, everybody that walked away from you, send them a thank you note. Everybody that left you when you didn't have nothing, tell them thank you. Because I just really wanted to know who the real people were. I really wanted to know who was going to be there in the good days and the bad days. Not just when everything is going good. Tell them. have to weed them out. They're already weeded out. Come on up in here. But he took their life. He blessed them. And then see, God's got to break you. Why are you going through the breaking? Well, the breaking is teaching you how to reach for Jesus. The breaking is teaching you how to humble yourself. The breaking is teaching you how to become more like Christ. I don't know who I came for, but if you're in the breaking season, it's only a season, and this too shall pass, but it's good for you to be broken. It's good for you to have to learn Learn about the goodness of Jesus in the land of the living. Look at your neighbor and tell him, I'm so glad it's only a season. I'm so glad that God has blessed me for it. He broke him. He breaks your life. He takes your life. He let all your haters come out. He let everybody that don't like you be known. He let your car break down. People talking about you on social media. Oh yeah, she getting another divorce. So what? They talk about you. Oh yeah, she, she had another baby out of wedlock. They talk about you. But look at your neighbor and say, so what? If it's a part of the making. I'm ready to be broke. If it's a part of what God wants to do in my life, come on and break me, Lord. Make me over. Do I have any witnesses in the house? I've been broke for a lot of other things, but if it's breaking, that's going to make me. I'd rather be breaking, broke, to be made than broke with y'all. If it takes me to get to know Jesus through the breaking, then break me Lord break me open the Bible says he took the bread he blessed the bread he broke the bread and then he gave thanks and the reason we have to be broken is because people can't take you in large doses <laughs> they they can't take you in large doses. They got to break you. God got to break you so that when you're giving, now you're giving it in a sweetness. Now you're giving it with love. Now you're giving it with grace. Now you're giving it, come on, out of the goodness of the Lord in the name of the Jesus. And so what he does, he breaks you to make you. He don't take away your personality. He just buffeted it. Come on. Not buffet it. Paul said that I have learned that I can be buffeted. Maybe, come on, he, he shapes you into what he's calling you to become. He makes you into what he need in the earth realm. Don't you know the reason you're on that job is because God needed you there. The reason you're in that spot to run is because God needed you there. He needed somebody he could trust. But he had to break you. And then you go through the breaking. That's why you wonder why my kids always acting up, busting out windows and 
smoking weed. And, and then the people that don't even go to church look like their kids doing the best because God is making you. It's only for a season. It's only for a season, but it's for a reason. But it's only for, tell your neighbor, it's only a season. It's just a season. It's a season. It's a season that God takes you through this so that he can make you over. It's a reason that God takes you through this so that he can bless you on the other side of it. But it won't always be like this. It won't always be this way. Somebody about to move into their new season. Somebody season is about to change up in here. Somebody God is saying enough is enough. I'm about to move these ites. We got company y'all out of your way. Here it is right here. I'm about to move them out your way. God is saying your season is about to shift. Your season is about to shift. How do you know? Because I'm going to another level. I'm going to another level. The Bible says after he broke them, come on somebody, now he gave them. Now he can give you. Now he can give you out and distribute you to the people to be a blessing to them. Now I know that I don't have all of this for me. It's for somebody it's for somebody else. I, I got to learn how to love those that are ugly, those that are not nice, those that, oh, come on, do me wrong. Come on, somebody. This is a new season now. I know how to deal with my enemies. I know how to deal with those that have treated me wrong and those that have done me wrong. I know now how to do this thing. I know now. And what the Bible says, the Bible says that when he stepped back and you look back over your life and you think things over, you see how God has brought you from a mighty long way. But to prepare you for where he's taking you, he has to make sure that the breaking is complete. And now he's saying and now you are able to be that conduit that blesses people in spite of them. And you're able to love those that do you wrong and you're able to give to those that are not in your camp or in your corner. You're able to give to the poor. You're able to have compassion where, where I didn't have compassion before. Now I can do it. But can I tell you what he's saying? He said, once the breaking is complete, the Bible says that you got to keep your hand in God's hand. You got to do it the way God does it. See, see, the breaking wasn't for you. It was for your family. It was for your family. It was for everybody that's attached to you. And God wants to use them mightily, so he had to take you first, the matriarch, the patriarch of the family. He had to take you first so that you'll know how to pave the way. So all of this hell was for those that was with me. Everybody that was going with me, I took the broom for you. I took the head for you. I was the one that was out on the boat. I was the one that had to reach and had to struggle. So he said that I did it through you because I realized that you could handle trouble. I realized that you wouldn't give up on me. I realized that you wouldn't turn your back on me. So for everybody that needs something to hold on to, here it is right here. You're blessed. You're blessed and highly favored. You're blessed and you're coming out. You're blessed going in and you're blessed coming out. You're blessed in the city and you're blessed in the field. And all I know is that though they try to take you out, God established you. He picked you up. He turned you around. I don't know, but your season is shifting. I dare you to act like it's already done. And then he places your feet on solid ground. All I know is that I can't help but to praise him. All I know is that I love him in the morning. I love him in the noonday. All I know that if he broke me, he's able to keep me. Look at somebody and tell them, good morning. Welcome to your new city.
season. Welcome to the new day. Somebody shout yes. Shout yes. God, listen, come on elders, God is up to something, come on minister, he's up to something, God is doing a new thing, listen, you don't have to come but it's a turnaround anointing. And I wanna, we want to pray with you for this new season that you're about to enter into. If you want to go, I need you to take Jesus with you. I don't want you to find a robbery and think more highly of yourself than you ought to. Any one of us can be pulled down in a twinkling of an eye. If you're here, the elders, the pastors want to pray with you. Why don't you come? Can I tell you that God has placed an anointing on the instructions? And where you go, I want God to go with you. I want God to go before you. I want God to send angels on assignment behind you. Because this too shall pass. And this new season in your life is a season of blessings. It's a season of turnaround. It's a season of unity. I hear God. It's a season of honor. I don't know who you are, but God knows you. And as the preachers pray and release the word, God is going to release an anointing. And who God has blessed is blessed indeed. Come on, Sister Kelly. Come on, can you pray? Come on. Can you sing something? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We welcome you in our hearts. Yes. We worship. welcome you in our hearts. Yes. Yes. They're waiting, preachers. Come on, pr pray. Yes. Yes. God, invade us. Invade us. Invade our hearts. Yes. Yes, Lord. Invade us, Jesus. Yes. We welcome you into our hearts. Yes. We welcome you into our hearts. Dwell yes. here and dwell here. Abide yes. in me, Jesus. Abide Invade us, Jesus. In me. Invade, Invade our us, hearts. Lord. Invade our hearts. Yes. Invade yes. our hearts. Take over yes. our minds. Yes. Take over our minds, yes. Jesus. We welcome yes. you in. Yes. We welcome yes, you in. Yes, Jesus. You are the God oh, of our minds, my regulator. Oh, do it for Jesus. Do it for Jesus. Dwell in our hearts. Yeah, God. Dwell do it for us. In the name of Jesus. Invade us oh, this Shandere. morning. Hey. Invade us this morning. We're calling on you. Come see about us. We're calling on you. Come see about us. Throw your weight around Jesus. 
roll your way around Jesus. Come into our hearts now. Come into our minds now. Oh, my son, my man, day. Oh, my nan, day. Did it wake your mind, day? Glory to Jesus. Come invade us now. Come invade us now. Oh. Come invade us. Come invade us. Dwell in our hearts, Jesus. Yeah. Dwell in our hearts, yeah, Jesus. We are your temple. Yeah, yes, we are temple. Dwell yeah. in us. Dwell yeah. in us. Dwell in us. Invade us. Yeah. Invade us. Hey. Invade us. Invade us. Invade Jesus. us. Invade, Invade us. Invade us. Invade us, Jesus. Yeah, God. Invade us. 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 Dwell in us, Jesus. Dwell in us, Jesus. Yeah, God. Dwell in us, Jesus. Dwell in us, Jesus. We push in your presence this morning. We push in your presence yes. this morning. Invade us, yes. please. Invade, Invade us. us, Jesus. Draw us near to the cross, Lord. Yeah. Draw us near to yeah. the cross, Lord. Draw yeah. us closer to you. Yes. Draw us closer to you. Yes. Draw us closer to you. Yes. We want to walk like you, Jesus. And we want to talk like you, Jesus. Draw us closer to you, Lord. Draw us closer to you, Lord. Yes, we want to be like you. We yes, want to be more like you. Creating yes. us a clean heart, hey, so that we may worship you, hey. Creating us a clean heart so that we may worship you. We want to be more like you. We want to be more like you. This is our cry, Lord. Make us more like you. Make us more like you. Said, make us more like you. Said, make us more like you. Invade us, Yanaman, Sunaman, Glory to Jesus, Yanaman, Sure de Debe, Command, Anaman, So Command, Invade us, Yanan, Sunaman, Glory to Jesus, Invade us. God is still way. releasing. He's releasing in the atmosphere. So right where you are, I want you to believe God that you're receiving everything that you need under this open heaven. Come on and tell them. Invade. Invade us. Yes. Invade tell them invade. Us. Invade us, said invade us, oh invade us, yes, oh invade us, oh invade us, oh invade us, oh invade us, we cry out to you, Jesus, invade us, we cry out to you, Jesus, invade us. Take over my mind, Lord. Take over my heart, Lord. Take over my body, Lord. Yes. We want you to invade us. Yes. Invade us. Invade us. Order our steps, Jesus. Yes. Order our steps, Jesus. Invade yes. us. And lead us and guide us along the way. Lead us and guide us along the way. Invade us. And take over our plans. We submit our wheels to you, Jesus. We submit our way to you, Lord. We're going to receive this word. Thank you. The word of the Lord is that you should focus on me and put your trust in me alone. He says, I have anointed you and ordained you for where I have purposed you to go. Keep your eyes on me. 
and your hands in my unchanging hand. He also said, I have blessed your pastor and anointed your pastor for greatness. He says, I'm elevating her and I'm making her name great. He says, as I told you before, the oil flows from the top of her head. And because I gave her to you, as she is blessed, the oil will flow down to you too. You are blessed also. The word of the Lord. Amen. We receive that word. Come on, put your hands together as we prepare to move forward in the service. If you're here today and you do not know the Lord as your personal Savior, would you come now or would you raise that hand and one of our elders, our pastors, will get with you. Amen. Would there be one to say, I don't know I'm pastor. I don't know God for myself. Or I walked away and I'm ready to come home. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. Come on, put your hands together if that's not you. At this time, we're going to receive our tithes and our offering. Come on, put your hands together. Everybody can participate in that. Amen. As we prepare to receive our tithes and offering. Come on, put your hands together as Elder Banks come. Amen, amen. I, I, I tell you, I don't know if you felt what I felt, but I felt the Lord doing something. I felt, felt him digging up something that had been buried. I, I felt the things that had been hidden, God's going to uncover. You, you know how you find hidden treasures that you didn't know were there? I, I, I think God's going to do that today. You, you know, I don't even have to say another verse because the one that she just preached is the one that you need to know right now. So I don't know what you were going to give, but the word said, reach beyond the break. If you reach beyond the break, then you'll catch what God wants for you. Sometimes you got to make a sacrifice. That sacrifice is reaching beyond the break. You say, well, I don't know if I have it to give. But if you want to live, you got to reach beyond the break. So there's ways to give. You give by zeal. Cash App, Giblify, or you can just give with an envelope, with dollars. You know I didn't say cents, I just said dollars. Because you got to reach beyond the break. You see, this is the word that has come down from God. God used pastor today to let you know that he wants to do something in your life. In order, in order for him to do that, you got to do something too. So if you got your offering, your sacrifice ready, would you please stand with me? And, and, and before you bring it, I, I just want, if you got your phone, uh, however you're giving, say, Lord, this sacrifice is for you. I'm reaching beyond the break because you said, Lord, that you would give me life. And whatever that is, whether it's your job, whether it's your family, whether it's you, whether it's your health, God's going to do it. Bring it forth in Jesus' name.
Come on, y'all. Amen, amen. I, I, I tell you something. For, for everyone that's in the house on the day and for those of you that are online, God is doing something in this house. He, he's bringing them in on this house. You, you, you know, one of the things I loved was growing up that when I fell or had an accident, I'd be crying, I'd scrape my knee, my arm. My mom would say, come here. She said, let, let, let me kiss it and make it better. Now, we know physically that don't do nothing. But at the time, it made me feel better. I was like, hey, I, I do feel better. Well, God's doing that to you today. When you come to church from your scratch, from your bruise, or whatever it is that got you down, he said, come here. Let me kiss it and make it better. <laughs> Would you please rise with me one more time? Heavenly Father, we thank you on today for these thy people. Those that are here, O oh, Heavenly Father, in your name. We ask as they go their way, O oh, Heavenly Father, that you would camp your angels around about them to keep them from all hurt, harm, or danger. And not just them, but their families and those that are connected with them. And that they, O oh, Heavenly Father, will move to another, another level. As pastors spoke on today, in Jesus' name, amen. You are dismissed. Thank you.